hi guys welcome to my channel for those of you that don't know me my name is Chino so Daniel and I live in London at the moment I'm a Nigerian and I've been living in London for the past I think three or four years now three years I guess this video is unconventional it's not my usual kind of video that talks about finance passive income making money I just wanted to be real with you guys. I want you guys to know me. You know, when you post a video, people watch the videos. People tend to see like, more like the good part of it. They don't see the other side of it. So I was like, let me show you the other side of it. <sighs> Hope you still watch my video after hearing this other side. You know, is I don't like talking about it because I try to you know, be conservative with it. And nobody tried to talk about their failures. Everybody talk about their success. So I think I want to tell you about my failures and the whole journey, how it has been. Ooh, I wrote some script down to remember as much as I can say. I will tell you. The whole journey started in Nigeria. Of course, I told you I'm, I'm a Nigerian and I came to study in the UK on scholarship. I studied at Imperial College, London and I finished in 2020. To add to it, the way the, the masters work is that you do like your coursework in school for two terms, then the, the last term, you have to do it in a company or in the school or anywhere you want. So I choose to go back to Nigeria to do my internship and project. The masters program that I did in the UK was just for one year. At the end of one year, it's time to get a job as people expect you know and they, that's when I started getting different shocks in life the different things that actually amazed me and surprised me in the UK system compared to the Nigerian system you know in, in Nigeria you finish from school you do your service after your service then you start looking for a job but in UK it's a completely different system and I was not aware of it until it was too late and I think that's where the, the frustration actually started from. After my internship in Nigeria for like three months, I came back to the UK to get a job. So I was like, yeah, I'm a brilliant guy. After all, I came to the UK on a scholarship. So what's that to apply for a job and get a job? So I started applying for a job in September. September, I applied, I applied, I applied. October came. <laughs> I was like, September, I didn't apply for a job in September. October, I was like, ah, this is me and job. In September, I was applying to oil companies, still trying to touch some finance firms, because even though I did oil and gas engineering in Imperia, I wanted to still work in finance. The issue was that they were not even calling me back for interview. Imagine in a state where you are applying for jobs over and over again. Now, just tell me any other company that I have not applied to. Share, Chevron, Isomobi, Tota. Tell me any other company that just create a new one. My CV is already there. I applied to, in fact, not just in the UK. I equally applied to the ones in Nigeria. In fact, there were some time that I ever had to apply to the ones in EU, which is outside the UK. So, in order to get an oil company job as a petroleum engineer, I was not applying for one. I was applying for all positions as a graduate. I applied, I applied, I applied. In fact, I see my village people were working. The more I applied, the more rejections I got. You know, there, there were ones I was even lucky to get a test. I banked the test as if I'm not intelligent. There were ones that I passed the test. I didn't hear again about the interview. I was like, okay, it seems the oil companies are not making sense. So if oil companies are not making sense, let's go to other companies. It was in October, November that I discovered that, hey, there's a reality here and my visa is about to expire by March. I'm like, I must get a job before March or else. I will find myself in Nigeria. And I was like, I don't want to go back to Nigeria. I came to the UK to look for greener pasture, as they say. So why will I go back to Nigeria? Whereas I, I am in where it happens. I was like, worst case scenario, I will intensify my effort. In one day, I need to apply to at least 10 jobs in one day. That's the minimum. That if a day I do not apply to any job, it's 10 jobs. 
But because I did not have any other job I was doing, applying job became my job and I gave my life to it. In one day, I can apply up to 100 jobs. Apply. Do you know what it means to be applying up to 100 jobs in one day? It means that you are applying to anything you see. Retail, dancing, security, anything as long as it's a job. I was dumping my CV. Applying, applying. I was applying like a madman. Without looking for a solution to his problem. <laughs> you know, it's so, it's so, I don't know what to say. Whether it's so annoying or it's so embarrassing. Up November came, no interview. Hey, I know, I was beginning to get worried. How, how will it be? December came, I was like, no, I didn't apply before. This is the time I'll kill myself with application. I applied, I applied, I applied. Is it KPNG, PWC, EY? Which, which company do you want to mention that employees graduate that I, I did not apply to? I was like, I would prefer to work in the UK rather than go back to Nigeria. So just a mess. In fact, I was trying to track my applications, but I lost count. Imagine applying for 100 jobs in one day and doing it for for months. So which means I have more than 1,000 applications. What is the problem? Like I was from Nigeria before I came to the UK, I got a job. It was not this difficult. So why is it so difficult in UK to just get a common job? I mean a common job. I'm not asking for a job of 100k, just a basic average graduate job. There was nothing to show forth for it. KPNG, Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley. Morgan Stanley I applied like a million times. I changed my email, do a different email, different style of email. In fact, the emails I've created that I, I can't even remember just to apply for a job over and over again. I did test. So, you know, I don't have a job, so my job was to apply to get a job. So I was doing it from morning to night, from night to morning. 2020 passed, yet not one interview. Hey, I was shaking. In January, your friend has become depressed. So I became depressed. I cannot believe that I know that I can become depressed because of job, ordinary job. You know, when you have put in your best effort and there's nothing to show for it, you know, it can lead to depression. January, I became depressed. February, February was laughing at January. Oh, you think you're depressed? You've not seen anything yet. You know, what was making me more annoyed is because I'm like, I did well, my result is fine. Everything is working well. In fact, when I was in school, I made first class. So what is the problem? Like, what is wrong? Is it wrong with me? Like, what's happening? You know, frustration upon frustration. In February, I was like, I can't take it anymore. Any company I go to, as long as they have any position for a graduate, I will dump my CV. Whether I'm interested in the role or not, I will just dump my CV. So I just go to a company website. Once there is a graduate role at all, I dump my CV. I'm like, handle the headache. So, and then I was lucky to get one interview. They gave me test. I did the test. Then they called me for an interview. I went for the interview. And two, two days after the interview, I was offered a job. I could not believe it. I could not believe that I have to make more than a thousand applications just to have one interview. So of all those applications I made, I only got one interview. And that interview is the job that I got. It's a hustle, my brother. It's a hustle. I was so happy I was able to get a job in March. It was getting close to my visa. But the problem is, if my company did not sponsor the visa on time, I would still find myself back to Nigeria, which I don't want. You know, and it was counting. It was getting closer, closer. It takes time to get the visa done. And I was already preparing my bank to go back to Nigeria before coronavirus happened. And they gave us an extension of two months. That was how I was able to stay back in the UK. And after the two months, they gave us one month extension again until my visa was done and I was finally able to start work. When the visa part was covered, it sounds all good, it sounds all interesting. From the period I got the job, which was in March, I was start working in August. All the money I have saved as a student has finished. What will sustain me from March to August that I will start a job? 
that's like six months or whatever. Where will I stay? And to pay house rent in UK is damn expensive, especially in London. And I was living in Saka Centre. So you should know that I'm living the most expensive place in London. So where will I get the money for the house rent? It's easy to say, oh, you call your parents now. Me that, that came on scholarship, that let's not go there. It's just a way of saying it's not an option. So the money I saved as a student, I've been spending it while I was applying for a job. But now I have a job and I have to wait for about six months before starting to work, which is what happened in the UK and does not happen in Nigeria. In Nigeria, if you have a job, you start working in a month time or two weeks time. But in UK, you have to wait like a year before you start working. And I have to wait like about six months before I started working. So to cope, to eat, to even live, it was it was the grace of God that I did not find myself living on the street. I was very close. You could have seen me and my bag on the street. <laughs> you know, it's a terrible experience, you know. Yeah, I'm happy at the end everything worked out, you know. At the end, I was able to get a job at the end. I did not live on the street. But I was very, very close to living on the street, being homeless, being foodless, being shatterless, being shirtless, any less you can add to the list, you know. I just had to make this video just as a way of you know, being real with you guys that it's been a hustle, you know. It has not been so, so easy. If my friends are like, oh, you stayed in the UK and you stayed back. Oh, you are very lucky. Now you see how lucky I am. I'll be ending here. If you like the story and you want, you want to hear more of it, the in-depth story, the step-by-step -step of, you know, of survivor and joblessness in a civilized country like UK, just tell me in the comment section and I will make more videos about it. But for now, please ensure you subscribe to my channel and you like this video. Bye.